things you need to know to help you prepare to fill out the FAFSA. Hi everyone, I'm Tina Steele, the FAFSA Guru, and if you like what I have to say, be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking the link below. The first thing you need to know is to create your FSA ID at least three days before you want to fill out your FAFSA form. The FSA ID is a unique username and password that every student needs to create along with one parent in order to electronically fill out and sign the FAFSA form in addition to other important paperwork. A lot of students don't realize they need to create this until they get all the way through the FAFSA at the end and then it asks them for their FSA ID. The problem is if you wait until then, it does take one to three days for the Social Security Administration to verify your identity, so it can delay you submitting your FAFSA. So get in there now and create that FSA ID at least three days prior to filling out the FAFSA form. The second thing I want you to know is that it's really important to fill out your FAFSA early, but not too early. And what I mean by this is when October 1st hits, everyone's going to be trying to fill out their FAFSA. So typically the first several days, especially the system can be very, very glitchy and frustrating to access. So as long as you're getting in there and getting your FAFSA completed in October, you're doing a great job and you're submitting it early. That doesn't mean if you're just coming across this video in November, December, January, or February that it's too late to fill out the FAFSA, but I encourage everybody to fill it out as early as possible. The third thing I want to go over with you is the IRS data retrieval tool. When you fill out the FAFSA form and you're required to enter your tax information, you can link to the IRS using the IRS data retrieval tool. While this is a great feature that can save you time down the road, especially if you're selected for a process called verification, this can be somewhat glitchy and problematic also. If you file a very complicated tax return, my recommendation is that you bypass the IRS data retrieval tool and you enter your information manually. I've seen cases where the information that is automatically uploaded from the IRS is somewhat inaccurate. If you file a tax return that's not super complicated, go ahead and use the IRS data retrieval tool. And remember, if you're divorced or separated, only one of you need to provide your income information on the FAFSA form. So if you filed a joint tax return last year with your spouse, you definitely do not want to use the IRS data retrieval tool because it's going to pull up both of your information. This is another situation in which you would want to bypass that feature and enter your tax information manually. The fourth thing you need to be aware of are the assets that are protected on the FAFSA. You do not have to report the value of your retirement accounts or the primary home that you live in. You also don't have to include the value of a business you own if it's less than 100 employees. The fifth thing I want you to be aware of is that any money the dependent student has in their bank accounts is going to get hit harder than the money that is in parent bank accounts. What happens is need-based financial aid can be reduced by up to 20% of the total amount that students have in their checkings or savings accounts versus 5.65% of what parents have in their accounts. So this is just something to consider if your child is saving money. A lot of parents, especially when they have a minor child, will have a bank account open on behalf of their child to kind of help them manage their money anyways. The sixth thing you have to be prepared for is that you do have to report the amount of child support received on the FAFSA. You also report the amount of any child support paid. Now, in a lot of circumstances, people are not required to divulge the amount of child support that they receive, but the FAFSA does ask for any type of income that is in untaxed and also has a separate question asking specifically about child support. So keep this in mind. The seventh thing I want you to be aware of and prepared for is that if you have more than one child in college, there is a question on the FAFSA that asks about the number of household members that are in college. So if you have two children in college, make sure you list two there. This is very important. I see a lot of families miss this and only list the one the one child that they're actually filling out the FAFSA form for. And what happens if you have multiple children in college, that expected family contribution that is determined by filling out the FAFSA is actually split equally among the number of students in college. 
So if you had one student in college and your EFC was $20,000, if you have two students in college and you list two in college, that EFC gets split in half, which means it's 10,000 for each of them. And this can make a very big difference in financial aid offers. And the eighth thing that I want you to be prepared for as you get ready to fill out this FAFSA form is be sure at the very end that you're signing it with your FSA IDs and you're following through and hitting the submit button at the end. I can't tell you how many families I've seen fill this form out in early October thinking that they submitted it only to find out several months later when they haven't received any information from the financial aid office that they never actually hit that submit button. So do not make that mistake. Make sure you finalize the FAFSA when you fill it out electronically. So there's eight things to help you get prepared for the FAFSA. And if you find that you need more assistance to help you navigate this overwhelming process and maximize your financial aid offers, be sure to check out my Financial Aid Academy and my Financial Aid 101 Masterclass, which you can find more information about on my website at thefafsaguru.com. It's not too late to join either of these programs where I guide students and their parents step-by-step step through the financial aid process. I tell you everything that you need to know in order to maximize your financial aid offers. I help you appeal your financial aid offers, and I have different levels of service available depending on how closely you want to work with me. A couple of those levels include you getting direct access to me for any and all of your financial aid questions throughout the entire year. So be sure to check them out. Thanks for watching and good luck filling out that FAFSA. Thank you.